Hello, Internet! And today, we have an early showcase of adventuring for you guys. That's and thanks to the official Honkai Shuttle team for giving me the opportunity to do this. And before we start, here are some disclaimers. Number one, all information and footage you'll see are from the Creator Experience server and are all subject to change. Number two, you'll see a watermark somewhere, but it basically says all information aren't official, they are not final. Number three, copyright restrictions has been opened so other creators can make content based on the video as well. Without further ado, here are the information on Adventurine's kit. Adventurine has a very normal basic attack, nothing special. His skill applies a shield named Fortified Wager to all allies based on his defense. This shield lasts for 3 turns and is stackable up to 200% of the shield provided by the current skill. This basically means every time he applies Fortified Wager, your total shield amount will pretty much increase till a certain point. But all you really need to understand is that this is more than enough shield, okay? Moving on, we have his talent, which does a lot of things. Firstly, any allies with Fortified Wager will gain up to 50 percent effect resistance. Secondly, when an ally is attacked with Fortified Wager, Aventurine gains one blind bat stack as shown with this icon here. Thirdly, Aventurine can resist crowd control debuffs once, which can trigger again after two turns. Fourthly, Aventurine gains an additional point of blind bet after he's attacked. Fifth, if he reaches 7 points of blind bet, he launches a 7 hit follow up attack, dealing damage based on his defense to a random enemy. You can get a max amount of 10 blind bat stacks at a time. This is a crud ton of things which will only make sense once we get to his traces, so let's just move on to his ultimate for now. Adventurine's ultimate states that he randomly gains 1 to 7 points of blind bet, then inflicts a debuff named Unnerved on a single target enemy. This debuff increases your allies' crit damage by 15% when you attack them. It also happens to have a fairly decent multiplier scaling towards his defense. And finally, we have his technique. Eventually, rolls RNG. Basically, as shown here, if you get one, two, or three of a kind, you gain a team wide defense increase of 24, 36, or 60%. For three turns. Needless to say, you are targeting the max every time. Moving on, we have his traces. The first major trace here states that for every 100 defense that exceeds 1,600, his crit rate increased by 2% up to 48%. This basically means you have to reach 4,000 defense in order to reach the maximum increase of 48% crit rate. The fact that he's given crit rate suggests that Aventry is designed to do critical damage. His second major trace grants your whole team a fortified Rager shield that is identical to the one you gain from his skill. This just means you don't have to have him move first to apply that shield. Pretty neat. And finally, this is the kicker. If your allies launches a follow-up attack, eventually will gain one blind bat stack. This can happen up to three times and it resets at the start of Aventurine's turn. On top of that, after Aventurine launches his follow-up attack upon reaching seven blind bed stacks, he provides all allies with more stackable fortified wager shield. The amount is double for the ally with the lowest shield. All of his shields will last for three turns. And with that, we can finally see the core mechanic of his sustaining abilities. It is mainly through his talent and his major trace. You are supposed to garner as many blind bed stacks as possible in order to activate as many follow-up attacks as you can through his talent. Every time he does this, he applies his stackable fortified wager shield to your whole team. He gains more blind bet stacks by being hit or having his allies be hit with his shield die. He also gains one stack per follow up attack done by your allies, which means you want to put him ideally in a follow up attack team. Do all of that and you'll find yourself be immortal with infinite amount of shields stacked up constantly. And enough about his kit, here are some information on his light code as well. It gives himself 40% defense flat, so yeah, it's already overwhelmingly high. He also gains crit damage by 40% if he applies a shield, which, well, he does in abundance. And finally, it has a 100% base chance to land an increased damage taken debuff. This would make it the second debuff that Aventry has on his kit, making him viable, but not optimal to pair with someone like Akira. Here are information on his eyelons as well. E1 and E2 holds immense value, but I'll just show you all of them here. Most people won't have the privilege to even get them, so I won't go too deep into it. But yeah, do take a gather though if you'd like. To end this yapping session, here's a very simple, conclusive showcase of Aventry's entire gameplay. You will spam his basic because you'll find that you won't even run of his shield if you have good follow attackers like Topaz or Ratio in your team. He'll do solid damage as a sub DPS, but never will he overtake your main damage dealer. Unless there's Eyelots. Because you have a lot of follow up attacks and your enemy also hits you a bunch, you will activate Aventry. Means follow up attack a lot 
getting you more damage and shields. His ultimate will do solid single target damage as a sub DPS. Landing the debuffs will help your team out as well. Constantly survive like this and dish out all the damage as you like with the rest of your squad. And that is Aventurine's entire gameplay in a nutshell. Now that that is out the way, we'll start with some live showcase. Take it away, past me. Hello, intro. No, I already said that. Uh, what's up, yo? Since you already know what his kit does, so let's just take a look at what the relics I do have on. Firstly, let's talk about the sets, right? It's kind of debatable. There are people who says, you know, Pioneer set has higher damage while Messenger set has higher speed. Both are really valid points, but for my personal taste, I like the fact that I get more shield and I have more defense to hit the 4,000 mark. I've already tested with the Pioneer set. It does do more damage, but it's so much harder to just get the 4,000 defense with that, right? As for Inner Soul Soto, this this one's also debatable where people could say you could go Broken Q, you could go also a Pentacone or any of the Fleet of the Ageless, you know, support type set. They're all valid, but I'm testing out under Cell Soto just to see his ultimate damage, yes? As for the main stats, I got magic damage boost with defense because I earned a 4,000, so I thought I used a magic damage boost orb to get his damage up. But enough yapping, let's just test him in his best setup here. We got a follow-up attack team featuring Ratio and Topaz. You also have a Ron May, and you won Ron May here because considering your whole team, even including Inventory, does damage, it's just a premium choice here. For starters, let's take a look at Aventurine's technique. Now, it's like gacha, basically. I got one of each kind there. That's terrible, but yeah, there we go. Two of a kind. The moment you do get it, you can start the game, which is, you know, it's kind of cute, but imagine trying it five times and just not getting it. That would be tragic. But either way, you already know what he kind of generally does, so what I'll do for you guys is I'll just show you a raw footage while I'll try to explain, you know, what he actually feels live. So right now I got Ron May. I just bought my entire team. Get those damage in there. It's just the normal stuff. We got Topaz Ratio. You've seen them more than enough. The game will start. Honestly, the one thing I already missed here is look at the shield, right? I didn't have to use my E because one of his major traits gave me the shield light right now. So I got a Tomb of Entering. I could use an E, but I see no point in using it. I'm still healthy with a lot of shield, so I might as well just use a Q, generate that skill point for myself. And yeah, let's just keep going. This guy's gonna hit me a bunch of times. That's seven blind bed stacks. And look at my shield. It is recovering, right? It's stacking towards each other. And in terms of shield size, you're looking at about the 1.5k range before anyone hits you. And then now, Rachel got hit, but he got replenished. He's now at 1.3k almost. Overall, my health point is still impenetrable. Like, I'm just chilling. Let's keep going. Now, I did also do follow-up attacks with Topaz and Dumby. Those are all one blind bet stacks every time I do follow-up attacks, right? Like right now with Dr. Ratio, boom, that's the second blind bet stacks. With the Topaz and Dumby, that's the third blind bet stack. And every time every tree does this follow-up attack, I get a shield. So that's how you're able to survive forever. Right now, I'm just chilling, right? I don't care about anything. And you just have that slender bit of health level. That's annoying. Will he die though? I don't know, guys. I'm gonna make certain that you do. <laughs> Let's just finish it. Dude, this is such a waste of damage. That guy's so annoying at a 1% health, man. Oh, gosh. But either way, we move on. We still have more than enough shield, so I guess I'll just only do a Q. And here comes the ultimate. What I want to show is the damage firstly, and just generally look at what it does, I suppose. Here comes the damage. It's only 27k. Nothing insane, yes? But... Nothing to just say you can ignore. It's still decent. And the best part about that is the under debuff. I get more crit damage up for all allies that attack this guy. And of course, we have all in as well from his um light code. All are just good supportive debuffs that's gonna help me do more damage. So with this L plus ratio, 100k right there. How good is that? With this E, I need to be able to kill you, but I don't think I could. Uh, it's gonna be a shame. Oh, with the toe pad. Oh, okay. That just saved my ass. Gosh dang. All attackers, man. They're so unpredictable. But yeah, somehow I squeezed in the zero cycle. I wasn't even really trying. My god, okay. Now I'll use my E with one May, I suppose, and we have the final fight here. I'm still chilling. Do note, firstly, the damage here, 15k from the blind bed, from the talent full attack. You know that it doesn't do that much, okay? Eventually, does not just out-damage your main DPS. That's something you gotta get right. What you really need to marvel at is the ability to just not lose a single health point yet. Look at my team, it's so healthy. Well, don't mind if I do, let's keep on going with the full attacks that gains me blind bed, and again, I don't need to use my E. Since I don't need my shield, actually, how thick is my shield right now? 1.8k, 2.3 thousand of ratio. Like, you are just so chill. 2.6 almost a run, May. You're not dying with that, man. Let's just use a Q. Get my skill point back. And for every time this freaking dinosaur, I, I'm fighting this stage as well because the dinosaur has a lot of multi hits. Every time you hit me with a shield on, that's one stack of blind bet. So, how free is that? Let's go with Dr. Ratio. Get some damage in there with the topaz as well. And with the blind bet, why not? There's so many things going on. Yeah, I'm not even playing a game. It's just happening on its own. And now we have one, May. Let's do 
our ulti. Here comes even more damage. Why the heck not? We are melting Cocolia without even like having not, having her weak to imaginary, man. You go with a Numbi, baby. Get some damage in there. 88,000 into 83,000. Gosh, Numbi. Huh. Relax. She's already dead. I'm not even saying because she's running out of health. She's literally dead in a lore, too. Yeah, yeah. I might as well do it on you. This is gonna damage as well. Imaginary weakness on you. It's only 23k with more blind bed. 24k to blind bed, and again I blind bed it. Like, I'm just not dying. Look at my shield. It's just never gonna end. And with that entire ordeal, double follow attack with my ulti, that's like 60k damage. For a preservation character, it is unheard of that you do that much. But either way, let's finish Kukulia up here. Bang with an E into the fob. You should be dead soon. 14 percent left. I don't really gotta touch you anymore. You should die to the turbulence. I'm not sure how it works yet. I didn't read. It's it's too much. My attention span's not enough. How are you still there? Huh? I'm gonna believe that you somehow how magically died in the turbulence. It, it does damage. I just, I just forgot what the criteria was. But yeah, let's try and just kill the dinosaur, I guess. Are you dead already? Holy cow. <laughs> oh, yep, he is dead. Can we do a one cycle? Yeah, totally we could now. Right now, we still look at my shield. It's not even... I have lost zero health points so far. Oh, mind if I do. I've, I've spent zero skill points. Lost zero health point. Yep, there we go with the turbulence. We've got him. That took me one cycle without really trying, right? And that is what you would expect for inventory. Now, I don't want to make a 30-minute video, so I can only talk about what he's bad at instead of showcasing, right? Because I don't know where to showcase. Actually, I could showcase against the boss inventory, but I have to kill Kokulia for that, so I'm lazy. Let's fight Yancheng. It's tradition, guys. You have to kill a Yancheng every video. This will just be a quick showcase. I'm not going to fight the full fight. I just want to see. I just want to let you guys see how CC works against a team with inventory. And we'll test out a team of Akron as well, which inventory has a lot of on him, especially on his um, signature. So it should be decent with Akron, right? Especially if you use the marketplace one where, where you burn with uh, Aventurine. But we'll just try this for now. Let's see how it works. The problem with Aventurine in this team is there's no follow-up attacks at all, right? That's that's issue number one. So you're not going to get as many blind bed stacks as you would love, but I don't know. It should still work out fine. Let's just go with Akron's ult right here. I just realized my Akron's unkit right now, so... Yeah, only 200k, but I say only. This is an ungeared Akron. Well, half geared Akron. And a yeet. Okay, we're fine. The real thing I want to showcase here is almost there. Okay, we got uh, we got a horse guy now. So I'm going to use an E right here because I'm out of shield. But what you're going to realize is with the shield, I have f rest. 43.7 is going to go up to 55 max it, but it doesn't say immune. So I can use my E. Black Swan now gains almost 50 f rest, but can she just resist it though? And bang. Yep. She cannot. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the issue. Now that someone got debuff and got control, Aventurine cannot do anything to help them. You have to wait out the control, so it's kind of annoying there. But remember, guys, Aventurine himself has a CC immunity only on his own. So if they targeted him, oh, he would be fine. He would eat that up for breakfast. But since it's on Black Swan, I only have 50 FRS, which is not impervious to any crowd control yet. You need 100 for that to happen, I believe. So, well, there we go. We got debuff, and you get to see an animation you don't usually get to see. Gosh dang, look at that. Ah, before I get too horny. But yeah, that is basically the issue with him, I would say. And the only other obvious one would be if you ever lose your shield for whatever reason, if you fight a really bad enemy, right? And you still just lose your shield, you have no way of healing up. But ideally, you just don't want to lose your shield. So that's why you want to run him in a flawed attack team. Get that um, rechargeable, uh, stackable shield rider constantly throughout the fight, and you will never even run out of um, shield points at all. So yeah, I think that is enough for me to give you guys some conclusion. You guys seen how he works best, right? At least in my opinion. So conclusively, at least for how it works in the creator experience server, sustain-wise, his shield is like more than enough for you to survive pretty much forever unless you're fighting like high, high, high levels of Kundra levels in Golden Gear that they just one-shot you anyway. But even then, you kind of just need eventually shield plus your push shield to really tank those. That's about, that's the amount of damage we're talking uh, there. But in any other game mode, ah, uh, you're fine. Like, if you have a follow-up attack team, at least one follow-up attacker at your side, like, say, Dr. Ratio, you'll be totally fine. That's enough follow-up attacks for you to at least get more consistent. But ideally, one to pass though, I would say. The issue with him is the lack of protection against crowd control for your allies. He, for himself, he does have an immunity, but for his allies, nothing, right? You only have 50, and you're only gonna be like, what, 50 extra ER on your Jing Liu, just to get that figure at 100, right? But speaking of which, Jing Liu does have like 30, no, from his mission trace. Wait, I'm onto something here, hold on. In terms of damage, he's doing the highest from any preservation character, but you're not gonna make him a main DPS, okay? Well, you could, but it's not gonna work that well, I think. So yeah, that'll be all for my coverage for an adventuring early 
really showcase and again should you pull or not and all of that i will not answer because this is just information for the creator experience um, server it's not official it's not final everything could change so this video should just be taken as inside and that'll be all for today's video before we end though really quickly here are the stats on all of the other characters i have if you're wondering i don't have eyelons on any of them so these are pretty achievable if you are just you know if you just pull one copy of everything i don't think this is still like you know too unreasonable yet i tried to give them good um stat lines but not too good that is impossible to hit and yeah this is one man as well you, you've only got a 161 speed and above with the 180 break effect that's really much it for that team so truly eventually it's like ability to amplify your damage paired with Ron May, paired with the follow-up attack fr uh, frenzy it's a lot of like synergy there you comment down below what you think about him and what you want to see as well i might be able to share with you guys more information about the uh, greater experience server so yeah hope you guys enjoyed that is all take care